It's the final of MasterChef. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. To win this, I think I've, I've just got to cut my heart out today. Yeah, I'm going to go for broke, absolutely. This is one tough competition. There's no room for error today. This is the last round. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. These three amateur cooks are the best in the country. Three finalists, an amazing journey, and it all culminates in these final challenges. They have given their all to get here, but at the end of tonight, only one can be crowned MasterChef champion. I really do feel close to the title, absolutely. I really, really want to come out the other side as the winner. I will really be gutted not to win today. I've been on a huge journey, um, you know, mentally and emotionally, to get here. Um, you know, I, I want that to finish with me winning this. In my mind, the only acceptable outcome for me is winning to the point now where, you know, I'll be devastated if I don't. They now face three final tests. First, they're back where they started, creating one perfect dish from a mystery box of ingredients. It's delicious. I love it. Absolutely. Love it. I'm, I'm actually quite shocked by it. Then they're travelling to Europe to the pinnacle of culinary perfection, three Michelin star restaurants. Just phenomenal, like nothing I've ever seen. Whoa! See. It's very critical. Please don't mess it up. It's all my worst nightmares, yeah. Finally, everything they've learnt must culminate in three sublime courses. It's the sort of dish you would expect in a mission star restaurant. My heart's thumping because I like it. Londoner Andy is seeking to be the first comeback contestant to be crowned MasterChef champion. Can I try one of those? Yeah. I love the diversity of London and the fact that, you know, there's so much food, so much culture, and all within a short distance. I love buying ingredients from around the world. It's exciting, it's the cooking something different. From his first day, Andy's amazed the judges with his determination and ability to produce some stunning plates of food. That was just lovely. I mean, wow. The guy is a talent. Andy's thought very seriously about what he's trying to cook and executed it very well. I think it's really most successful. Yeah, it works. Well done, because that is not easy. And I think even for one of us, that would have been pretty difficult. But at times, he's been let down by a lack of focus and attention to detail. Right, guys, they'll be up here in about two minutes. Just got a little bit more to do. Is there a pancake in there? No. By not doing it, you're the only one with soggy pastry. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, that's not going to sit on the plate, mate, and that's going to go everywhere. It really is a bit sloppy. Andy is driven. He has strived to be as best as he possibly can. He just now has to be able to concentrate and produce beautiful dishes. I've always been determined, but you can feel the sort of tension rising, you know, the fact that we've got to beat each other in the final cook-off. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Please Please take care. Bye-bye. I've got to take some risks and I've got to really, um, yeah, cut my socks off. At 24, and with just three years cooking experience, civil servant Christopher is determined to combine a natural creativity with a career in food. In my day job, there's just no kind of like creative outlet, but with cooking, it's just kind of like the complete opposite of that. I love food so much. It's just definitely something that I want to do. 
Right from the start, Christopher's love of modern British cooking and elegant presentation has wowed the judges. It's simply delicious. You're going to run out first. So well done. Thank you. Bit of good news for me. Excellent. This is a plate full of food which shows culinary intelligence. There's something quite interesting about this cook, for sure. However, Christopher's lack of experience has caused problems. There is still this issue with you tasting stuff. You've got to make sure those flavours work. How's those ravioli? This is critical now for the whole service. I mean, they even though it's a bit hard. It's not very delicate, is it? Your plates, they are ordered, they are organised, but they are not very inspirational. Christopher has the ability to deliver outstanding modern food. But he has to make his food taste as good, as elegant as it looks. MasterChef is just the craziest experience that you could ever imagine. Definitely taking me out of the comfort zone. It would take anyone out of their comfort zone. The whole thing has just taught me to kind of believe in, in my own cooking ability. The title's there for whoever wants it, and I think it's going to be really, really close. Yeah, I definitely want to win. Father of three, Matt, combines his passion for food with a love of the British outdoors. I was born here, but I grew up in New Zealand. I've enjoyed coming back here. I enjoy the English countryside. My food is all about where I live now. You know, the, being able to go diving, being able to go foraging, bringing that all together into a great plate of food. And, and that's what I enjoy doing. With an intrinsically rustic style, Matt has proved he has a truly sophisticated palate. You produce flavour of the unexpected, which are absolutely delightful. And that is fantastic. It is a perfect harmony of dancing flavours. Nothing short of stunning. It's perfectly done. I think we're all really very, very impressed with you. But at times, Matt has struggled with his presentation. The appearance of an oyster thrown on top of a steak. It was like a really giant baby. I'm going to need to stop you. So if we look, they're growing as we go along. Any that are too big, reject. To be honest, I wouldn't really serve them. I want eight, and I want eight perfect ones. Matt has the ability to deliver absolutely outstanding, thought-provoking food. Matt has to produce gutsy, egalitarian, generous food with finesse. The dream for myself, my wife, my family, is to have, like, a small cafe. What MasterChef has done is kind of make it more of a reality. You've only got one shot at life, and I want to win it. You know, that's, that's you know, and, and I want what comes with that. Gentlemen, welcome to the MasterChef Grand Final. We are taking you full circle. You walked in the door, we gave you a set of ingredients, and we asked you to cook us one plate of food. You are going to do exactly the same today. Let's see what food you would serve to John and I if we were coming in your restaurant right now. That is what we want to see. Gentlemen, let's cook. The three finalists must design and cook one dish out of a selection of ingredients, which include venison, guinea fowl, sea bass, prawns, bacon, sweet potato, wild mushrooms, spinach, beetroot, chilli and fennel. more nervous now than I have been at any point in the competition. No other result is acceptable for me but winning it, that's just how I feel. I'm going to be giving it absolutely everything. 
Andy, what do you think your food has to say about you today? I've just got to show I've learned something. Um, and I have learned a hell of a lot. And I've got to show consistency. And I've just got to produce a really composed, interesting, tasty plate of food. We have never, ever had a comeback winner. No. I'm hoping to, to change all that. Gentlemen, you have just 25 minutes left. 25 minutes. Christopher, I see a pasta machine upon your bench. Today, you're going to risk pasta? Pasta hasn't exactly been my friend on, on MasterChef, so, you know, if there's something that you're scared of or something that you're not confident with, then you just need to keep practising it. If it goes wrong, at least I made an effort to, to try and mix it up a bit, so... Hallelujah! <laughs> I definitely think MasterChef has given me the confidence to know that if I put my mind something that I'm really passionate about, then I can be good at it. Definitely got my eye on winning. And what about that big heart that Matt had when he first walked through the door? Are we seeing that again today? Definitely. I'm loving it at the moment, learning so much. Not ready for it to stop yet, but I'm afraid it's going to have to uh, very soon. What are you going to do for us, Matt? There's a lovely piece of venison fillet. Make a nice little sweet sauce to go with it. There's some artichokes, wild mushrooms. You've been daring with flavours before. Is this going to be one of those Matt miracles where you put it in your mouth, not expecting it to be so fabulous? This, I hope, will taste really, really good. I want to win it for the family, and that's why, you know, at times there's emotion there. I just need to get my head down and, and knock them out. You have just five minutes. Five minutes to finish off and place. Thirty seconds. Time's up. Time's up. That's your lot. After everything he's learnt, can Andy deliver a faultless dish? He's attempted a delicate combination of sea bass with a prawn bisque on a bed of spinach. I think your flavours are very, very good because you've got the acidity of the shellfish, you've got the sweetness of your sauce and you've got that iron richness that goes with the spinach. It makes me smile, it makes me happy eating it. That is deep, it's well seasoned. Both the fish and the prawn are cooked perfectly. Very, very well flavoured. Well done. Thank you. Christopher's hoping to show how much he's developed with his bacon-wrapped guinea fowl stuffed with mushrooms on a sweet potato ravioli drizzled with a pesto oil. I applaud you for you attacking your demon, the nemesis, pasta. You've got this wonderful sexy little ravioli. You've got this lovely smoky bacon on the outside. The herb dressing, which is, you know, really punchy. I think the flavours are right. I think your textures are really good. You must be very, very proud man indeed. Thank you. That's a very pretty looking dish, cooked to perfection. I think the pesto, ravioli and sweet potato is a brilliant combination. The cook you are now, compared to the cook you were, it's quite astonishing. I achieved, you know, 
making the pasta and I just thought, you know, I'm not going to be in the MasterChef final again, so why not just give it a bash? Kind of just cooking from my heart and not, not worrying about it too much and just letting it flow. Matt's dish is an ambitious combination of venison with wild mushrooms, plum and raspberry sauce, chili roasted beetroot, and almond and hazelnut crumble. There are a lot of ingredients on that plate. Now, I'm not going to criticise until I actually stick it in my mouth. OK. The natural venison flavour is oozing out. You come in with some earthy, earthy beetroot and you finish with a little bit of heat. I'm so glad I didn't tear into you before I actually stuck it in my mouth. It's clever and it tastes lovely. But I'm, I'm actually quite shocked by it. It has an amazing flow about it, whereby your mouth just continues to run around and understand what's actually on that plate. It's delicious. I love it. Absolutely love it. Wow, thank you. Whew. Absolutely superb. You should be very, very proud of yourselves. It's going to be one hell of a sprint to the finish line. Gentlemen, we'll see you soon. Today, we took them right back to the start, the ingredients test, and they have done themselves proud. They have developed into stunning, stunning cooks. I was really excited by Matt's food. Sweet from the venison, sourness of the fruit, and that hint of chilli to make it something truly fantastic and surprising. To put those ingredients together and for it to culminate in food that good is the work of a truly, truly talented and gifted cook. There is a huge smile across Christopher's face. To come in here and to take on the pasta and then to pull it off, I think, demonstrates how far that young man has come. It had definitive flavours. You taste the sweet potato, you could taste the bacon, you could taste the guinea fowl, and then they all come together. It was stunning. I applaud Andy today. To do all that work in 50 minutes is unbelievable. Sea bass, prawns, a sauce made with the shells of the prawns, tomatoes, and it was very, very good indeed. I think the guy has an amazing touch and I think he has a very, very good palate. They all cook beautifully, absolutely beautifully, but who was going to be the superstar? Three fantastic cooks and one ultimate prize. <laughs>So now we send our three amateurs to some of the best restaurants in Europe. They are going to get their last chance to pick up techniques, hone their skills with some of the masters of the culinary world. We need to see one of these three really strive forward and show us exactly how good they are. The Michelin star is the ultimate recognition of culinary excellence. Winning a star and then trying to keep it is one of the greatest challenges a chef can face. <laughs> Legendary chef Juan Mari Arzak <laughs> and his daughter Elena run Arzak in San Sebastian, Spain. With their famed library of over a thousand ingredients, Arzak's groundbreaking twists on classic Basque dishes has earned them three Michelin stars. Arzak is one of the best restaurants in the world. And for me to step in there and actually do a lunch service is a serious responsibility. I've got to do a good job today. If I don't, um, yeah, I'll be devastated.
Rene Redzepi is the rising star of international cuisine. His Copenhagen restaurant Noma is one of the top 10 restaurants in the world. Passionate about local produce, Noma combines Nordic tradition with cutting edge techniques for a truly unique gastronomic experience. I'm nervous. I hope I do well and don't mess it up. But I'm excited about you know, the opportunity to learn. I'm just really looking forward to it. Jean-Michel Laurent is the third generation of one of France's greatest cooking dynasties. Serving an innovative take on French classics, his restaurant La Côte Saint-Jacques in Joigny holds three Michelin stars. This is like the highest end of food that you can possibly get, so there's going to be no room for mistakes. But I want to go in there and you know, be able to show that I can learn things and can pick things up. I'm, I'm very, very nervous, definitely. A Michelin judge can visit one of these restaurants anonymously at any time. So these chefs are taking a great risk allowing amateurs to cook in their kitchens. For our three amateurs, they're about to experience something that many a chef would wish to be able to experience. You mess up at this level, you create an absolute crisis. I just hope they're up to it. Hello, how are Hello. you? We I'm are happy well, you are you. here. Eh? Hello. How are you? Eh? I'm a little nervous, but excited. Well, let's go. Okay. It's not of work. Thank you. During service, Andy will be cooking the delicate blackened tuna held together with a seared tuna bone and accompanied with a moho sauce. It looks stunning, but it's food, so um, it's going to be a challenge, I think. Arzak restaurant won its third Michelin star in 1989 and has held it ever since. Diners travel from all over the world and book months in advance to sample Juan Marie and Elena's culinary creations. Un corte cuchillo raso. Tipi, 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 tipi. You can make slowly, but don't worry. Mm -hmm. okay. This is food at its highest level. This is about precision, and for Andy, that's what it's all about. OK, Andy. OK. The fact that I'm going to be cooking here and looking at how they work already, it's just, you know, it, it puts the extra pressure on because, you know, if I'm the only one that's stressing and bumping into people, dropping things, then, you know, I don't want to be that person. My work is just to make the maximum of flavour. Okay. So that's a great challenge. Okay. Excellent. So yeah. we will go in the kitchen and, uh, and work now. Okay. At La Côte Saint-Jacques in France, Christopher will be responsible for the technically demanding oyster porridge with onion and lettuce puree and a pancake twirl. Jean-Michel's unrelenting attention to detail has taken his cuisine to the very highest level. The pancake must be to be very thin. Right, OK. okay. We'll do that uh, perfectly. Hopefully, yeah. La Cote Saint-Jacques has held a Michelin star for longer than Christopher has been alive. It's still the so quick. The second chance. We know that Christopher can present beautiful looking food, but for him it's about flavour. Yeah. Looks better. No? Right. Okay, so just on top. Yeah. How many coffees you drink this morning? None. None? I'm okay. shaky though. So that's fine. <laughs> I will not serve it for the first time, it's not, uh, <laughs> it's not too bad. No, I've never done anything like this at all. Nothing even close to it, really. Today for lunch you will be cooking the skate. That is the biggest skate I've ever seen. In Copenhagen, René Redzepi's Noma is Scandinavia's most famous restaurant. Open for less than three years, it's already been awarded two Michelin stars. Don't uh, press down too much. I think you can do this, Chef. Go ahead. Matt has been given the daunting task of cooking the skate poached in butter with hay-baked celeriac and beech plants. Yeah, 
Beautiful. Perfect, perfect. Makes you feel like a chef, right? Yes. Matt has always said he wants to work with natural wild products. Well, that is what Noma does. This could be an absolute mind-blowing experience for Matt. Steady hand, chef. Yeah. And you have to attack it with confidence, chef. Exactly, just like that. You see the difference? This one is just perfect. There's huge inspiration here. This is the sort of food that, that I want to cook. It's, it's brilliant to see how it can be cooked to this level. Um, really, really inspirational. It's lunchtime, and across Europe, service is about to begin. Our three finalists are about to enter the world of Michelin star dining. Expectations have never been higher. If they really want this title, they have to step up to that Michelin star level. Everything has to be absolutely precise. People are traveling from around the world to eat at these restaurants. They are paying top dollar. Our guys cannot mess up. Dos medias de mendesca bonito pasando. Andy, tu cual porción de tuna, pasin. Yes, chef. At Arzac in San Sebastian, Andy now has the daunting task of preparing the blackened tuna, seared rib bone and mojo sauce to Michelin standards. Irregular. A little bit more. So, what is missing? Think about. Okay, muy bien. The tuna needs to be delicately cooked and then plated to perfection. Table two, please. Table two. Whoa. See. Another order? One more chicken. He has a special feeling for the, the cooking. I can see that. I can feel that. I've never sent any food like that before. You know, this is three Michelin star food and paying customer out there, so that's a great feeling. Chris, we have uh, two orders with the oysters. OK. Needs to go in five minutes. 300 miles away at La Côte Saint-Jacques, Christopher has his first order for Jean-Michel's trademark oyster porridge. We have a very special guest today because we have my parents who will taste the dish. So that's high level tasters in the dining room. Jean-Michel's father is himself a Michelin star chef. Christopher's food has to be faultless. I think I need salt. Any salt? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tastes good. Okay. Now we need uh, to go a little bit faster because the guests will not uh, wait uh, like I chef until tonight. Combien de temps la chef? Two minutes? No, no, c'est pas. Okay, engineers, table set. Oui, chef. Very, very good. Your style is very natural and uh, can taste very good. Yeah. Very, very. Different from cooking at home, be quite sort of blown away by it. Guys, first ticket in, table five, two five course. Yes, chef. Please don't mess it up. At Noma in Copenhagen, Matt gets his first order for butter poached skate and beach vegetables. Cooking of it, there's not really any room for error, so it, you know, it's either cooked properly or it's not. How long for fish? Ten seconds, chef. Table six, um... Two fish, chef. Salted. Salted, thank you. 
Very good, chef. You're gonna help me dress this, okay? Matt must now present the skate and beach plants to Michelin standards. It's beautiful. Well done. I'm really very surprising. <laughs> Thank you. He definitely understands food, you know. It's, it's very, very good. Very, very, very good. With service over, it's now time for Andy, Christopher and Matt to face the most demanding test of all. They each have to cook the signature dish that has helped make the restaurant famous and serve it to the legendary chef who created it. This is the highest level of a professional chef. I just hope they're up to it. Cooking for chef is definitely daunting. If he's happy to serve it in his restaurant, I'll be well chuffed. Shake it a little bit, just, uh, you know, ner nerves, basically, but I've got the idea of how the dish should look, and it's just phenomenal, like nothing I've ever seen. The skill to do this is very difficult to explain it. It's all my worst nightmares, yeah. Thank you. Eh? Looks well. Has Andy managed to perfect Arzac's famed dessert of grilled spiced pineapple with flowers, nuts, and an exploding pina colada shake? Sí. Un poquito. Está mejor que la nuestra. My father says this is better than ours, eh? And Andy, congratulations, eh? So we, he says congratulations and me as well. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Muy bien. Muy bien. No creía que iba a ser así, eh? He neither thought that he was going to be so good. That was awesome. What a day. I'm blown away by the whole experience and um, it's given me a massive boost. And I just can't wait to get back and cook the best three courses of my life. Christopher has attempted Jean-Michel's legendary dish of mullet fillets with aubergine caviar and tomato confit. Thank you. Looks great. Thank you. Yeah, very good. I can serve that to my, uh, to my guests. Very good job. Congratulations. Thank you. I was really surprised because uh, this dish is perfect. I think it has really a good quality to, to be a cook. Today just given me a massive confidence boost. I know what I've got to do in the final and I'm confident with the dishes that I'm going to put together so hopefully they'll be good enough to win. As Matt risen to the challenge and demonstrated the balance of flavours required for René's incredibly delicate beef tartare, wood sorrel and cream tarragon. Are you sure you did this? Come on. The visual is fantastic. It's Thank you. spot on. I, I really think you've done an extraordinary job on this one. Wow, thank you. You're very, very, very talented. Fantastic. Thank you. If this is the way he does the first time, I would love for him to come back to see what he can do, really. It's, it's, it was outstanding. Today has just filled me with so many ideas. You know, there's so much of what he does here that, that just inspires me hugely. If I can bring some of that to the final, they come in with the really, really good chance. We never expected amateurs to be as good as they are. Not so long ago, with their own home kitchens, cooking home food. 
our finalists, John, right now are absolutely on cloud nine. But tomorrow, they are going to be cooking their last three courses. Who is going to really shine? Who is going to really prove to us that they are good enough to be a professional chef? Right now, I am nervous and I am extremely excited. It's MasterChef and it is final day. These guys have given their soul for this competition. Now, who wants it the most? Who can truly deliver the most outstanding food? I want to show Greg and John that I can cook MasterChef winning food. It's literally do or die today. I've put a lot of work into this. I'm being very serious about the way I prepare for this. There's no other chances to impress. Um, what I do today is, is final. I'm terribly nervous about the final. I'm just trying to keep myself under control. If I won it, it would be an amazing achievement. Everything you've learned so far this competition culminates in the here and the now. Three courses, and you have two hours to cook them in. Who's going to be our champion? May the best man win. Let's cook. Today, I was determined to do the kind of food I love. I'm doing a starter of rabbit, loin, rack, and kidneys. Then I'm gonna do a thermidor of spider crab with sea vegetables and a side of chips. Then blackberry coulis and lavender mousse with a bit of hokey pokey. Hokey pokey is New Zealand name for honeycomb, basically. Technically, anything that really, really worries you? There's a whole bunch of things that, that I'm doing that are a little bit left field. You know, it's going to be interesting. I think Matt has a brilliantly dangerous three courses for us, full of loads of mad wild ingredients. We've always asked Matt to take his robust flavours and add a bit of finesse. I can see him in the starter, I can see him in the dessert. That middle course is a big piece of crab with big chips. I'm very excited as long as he can achieve it. 20 minutes, gentlemen. 20 minutes have gone. Christopher, did you ever, ever expect to be standing here in the final of MasterChef? No, absolutely not. MasterChef kind of changed my life on about the second round, to be honest. Thinking about going back to work nine till five is just not an option. This is what I want to do, and it's just taken 25 years for me to actually figure that out. We'd love to know what it is you're going to cook for us, Christopher. Start, I'm going to do a scallop ravioli with black pudding and cauliflower puree. My main course is roast belly pork with bubble and sweet cake, clams and a cream caldos sauce. Oh! And for pudding is dark chocolate tartlet with a sesame snap and creme fraiche. And how are you feeling right now? Just kind of getting everything done as quickly as possible and making no mistakes. Christopher's menu sounds really, 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 really good. It's all about elegant presentation. It's all about flavour. It's got to be absolutely on the money. Halfway! And the Master Chef title up for grabs. Wow, what a
what a stunning array of ingredients. Where do we start on this culinary journey and where do we finish? I'm going to do um, a starter of Thai-style crab salad and then for main course I'm going to do glazed duck breast with wontons stroke ravioli filled with braised duck leg. And then a bit of a fun dessert, I'm doing um, a kind of mango and passion fruit sundae. Why have you decided to hit Asia today? It's important that in the final you do stuff that you're most excited about, that you, you know really represents you and stuff, and you know, this is the food I love. Is timing an issue today? Uh, it shouldn't be, but I've said that before. <laughs> Just need to hold it together. I think Andy is being incredibly risky. He's got a whole Southeast Asian menu. It is risky, but if he does get it right, wow. You have but eight minutes, you should be plating. That's it. Your time is up. With the pressure really on, can Christopher's flavours match his presentation? For his starter, he's made scallop mousse ravioli with black pudding and cauliflower puree. As soon as you put that in your mouth, a big sweet scallop comes up and gives you a big kiss. That ravioli is exceptional. I didn't expect it to deliver such a punch. It plays with your palate in such a fantastic way because you get that huge, rich sea scallop. The pasta just holds it in there. I feel it just needs a little bit more moisture to it. Christopher's main is a roast belly of pork with clams, bubble and squeak cake, and a cream Calvados sauce. Mm, yummy. I like the sweetness and the saltness that comes with the clam, and your bubble and squeak is beautifully soft and well seasoned. The pork, you had two hours. The pork needs to cook for a little bit longer. I think it needs to be a little bit softer. But, nice dish. I've eaten your food like this before and it's absolutely delicious, mate. Thank you. Flavour-wise, I think it's great. Presentation-wise, I think it's fantastic. But you did something really dangerous today and that was to try and cook a piece of pork belly in two hours. Uh, I, I think it's, it's that far off perfect. For pudding, Christopher's made a chocolate tart with a sesame seed snap and creme fraiche. Sour, first of all, from the cream. Then sweetness starts to come in and finishes on that lovely, lovely cocoa. They are beautiful combinations. You understand that and you carry it out perfectly well. Well done. Thank you, cheers. I get that really rich, buttery pastry, and then you hit the rich, deep chocolate filling, and then you crunch into that caramel and get great texture. Today, you had to do flavour. Today, you've done flavour. You've done flavour in the way that flavour should be done. Can Matt prove he's learned how to make his hearty, rustic food big on finesse as well as flavour? His first course is a trio of rabbit with nettles and pancetta crisps. It 
salty pancetta and soft loin. The nettle just kicking in. There's a little bit of dill that just whacks your mouth apart. The flavours are unbelievably extraordinary. For me, it's shocking in a way because I never thought I'd see a dish as beautiful as that. I love it. Now, this is stunningly good food. It's the sort of dish you would expect to get served up in a Michelin-style restaurant. I mean, it is that good. I'm actually quite blown away by it. Thank you. Matt's main is a spider crab thermidor, accompanied with mussels, foraged sea vegetables, and a side of chips. It's sweet, it tastes of the sea, it's soft, it's delicious, the sauce is silky. My heart's thumping because I like it. It's a lovely looking dish. I think it, it, it's being true to the crab. It is lovely. It is lovely. It's extraordinary for an amateur to be coming out and cooking like this, I think is extraordinary. For pudding, Matt's made a creamy lavender and blackberry mousse with honeycomb and blackberry sauce. I like the sweetness of the honeycomb. I like that sort of fragrance that goes with the lavender. The texture of it, the flavour of it is just fantastic. I think that's inspired, really inspired. You get a bit of fizz and you yeah. get deep blackberry. Then in comes this really mellow cream and then finishes with lavender. It is beautiful. You come into the final with the most stunning plates of food I have seen for a long, long time. What I've done here is, is taking what I love. This is my own stuff. This is what I'm about. Has Andy risen to the challenge and created three faultless plates of food? His starter is Thai style coconut crab salad with chili, lotus root crisps, and micro herbs. The crab stands out, the chili heat the saltiness which goes to the dressing, the sourness of the fresh lime juice on the salad, and you still have the sweetness of that coconut which backs the whole thing up. I think it's fantastic. Thank you. For a little light dish, that is punching well above its weight. Those flavours are quite extraordinary. Yeah, that's lovely. Very, very, very well done, young man. For his main, Andy's made glazed duck breast with duck leg ravioli, mushrooms, chili, spring onions and ginger. The duck is slightly undercooked, but the intensity of flavour is so marked that I forgive it because it is, I think, inspiring. The duck comes through, hints of ginger, again, a little bit of spice, and it finishes with woodland mushroom. I think your flavour combination is absolutely stunning. That is terrific. Really, really terrific. Thank you. Andy's pudding is a mango, crispy coconut and passion fruit sundae. Every single flavour in there is just so fresh and so delicious. You get the crunch of the mango in the little cubes, you get the softness and that sort of air almost of the coconut. I think the flavours in there are fantastic. I think the idea is fantastic. I hate the glass. Oh, really? I think it makes it look really cheap.
to work so hard and to keep all those flavours as natural as you can is the work of a talented man. And that is pure heaven on the end of my spoon. That is a thing of absolute joy. For you three, your work is over. But for us, now we've got to decide who's going to be our champion. Thank you very much. Off you go. We have three finalists who have come on such a huge journey, have come such an extraordinary way to becoming really, really good cooks. I haven't seen quality of food like that ever in a final, ever. They are phenomenal cooks. Christopher, the man who absolutely loves modern British food. I love the scallop ravioli, absolutely loved it. Bursting with flavour. Loads of texture, bags of flavour. It would have been stunning with a sauce, absolutely stunning. Pork belly, bubble and squeak, great idea. Pork belly, not moist enough. Soft pork would have made that an absolutely fantastic dish. Chocolate tart, I thought it was the delight. I think technically he has got it. We've always said to Matt about presentation, the presentation of his food today was like, wow, where did you come from? I thought that rabbit was just beautiful. Highly flavoured and lovely. The idea of the crab from Matt, it gave out the wonderful flavour of the sea. I mean, how stunning. His dessert for me actually was probably one of the nicest things I've eaten today. It was mellow, it was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. From starter through main into dessert, thought-provoking, elegant presentation, fantastic depths of flavours from start to finish. Andy today, boy, did he deliver. That crab salad was the embodiment of everything Thai. Sweet, sour, salty, hot. It was delicious. It was heart thumping. I didn't expect it to be as complex. It was just great. His main course, duck slightly undercooked, but again, taking the leg, poaching it, making pasta, filling it up. The textures worked, the flavours worked. I mean, that is someone who truly understands flavour and texture combinations, because it was quite incredible. The dessert, it looked cheap in the glass, it delivered to the highest level. Soft, beautiful, it's exciting. I would have happily bathed in it. I mean, it was just <laughs> gorgeous. I am absolutely blown away by those guys. Absolutely phenomenal food. In this competition, we have watched, we have followed them through this extraordinary journey, and now we have to make that one decision. Christopher understands clean-looking food, presentation, and he has now got flavour. It is unfortunate for Christopher that he is sharing kitchen space with two truly exceptional talents. Andy, today we asked to give us a menu and give us flavours that followed on. That food was fantastic. Plate after plate of great food. That's what the young man has done. From Matt, we said to him, couple refinement with your big flavours. That is what that guy has achieved. For Matt, he has wowed three extraordinary courses, delivered beautifully with huge amounts of flavour. I, I really do want it, yeah. I mean, I've gone through loads to be here and deep down inside, just kind of starting to well up a bit and uh, just a bit choked, really. Just really, really proud of what I've done. A few months ago, I didn't expect to be anywhere near this, so... I, I so want to win. It's, it's been a hell of a journey, you know. I'm a bit sad, you know, it's a bit bittersweet that it's going to finish. I'm feeling just totally boosted. I'm absolutely exhausted. I'm just emotional, you know, just nervous wreck, basically. When you've invested this much time in anything, you know, you want to see the results on a personal level. This is going to be an extraordinarily hard decision to make because all three of them are brilliant, absolutely brilliant. 
how do we look into the eyes of those guys and say, actually, you are not good enough this year? This is one of the hardest decisions of my life, this one. Who takes the title? Who is our MasterChef champion? I want to applaud all three of you because you are amazing. We made our decision. And our MasterChef champion is Matt. Congratulations. I did it. I bloody did it. Today was about cooking my stuff. It's been an amazing experience. I've developed as a person, I've grown in confidence through food. I just have to get over the fact that I haven't won and think about all the great stuff that I have done. I'm devastated, but I'm definitely going to carry on cooking. I want to do something really exciting in the food industry and nothing's going to stop me. so much. <laughs> I'm, I am holding a trophy. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> oh, there is now no doubt in the absolute originality and brilliance of Matt. The guy is cooking his own style. He is absolutely superb. Matt came in here and absolutely wowed us with food which was extraordinary in both presentation and flavour. Matt is our champion. I'm so happy. That is going on the shelf in my restaurant.